Hello, 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 and you are never going to want to go first again after you see this video. I know it's a crazy uh, claim, but just hear me out. In fact, if you give me just one minute, I'm going to explain what's called the hand trap paradox. The meta is not hand trap friendly, and this is a fun paradox that I discovered involving hand traps. If you give me five minutes, though, I'm going to change the way we look at board breakers forever. I have a lot of interesting maths and statistics. There are some board breakers however that many people are making mistakes and they're still playing that are bad and i need to correct those and if you give me 10 to 15 minutes i'm going to mathematically prove that going second will equal a better win percentage and there's a big difference between going second cards and your board breaker cards we're gonna dive right in because for some people i only have a minute so let's go let's jump right in i can't wait to show you this stuff now when we're talking about the hand traps most modern decks can play through a single dealer hand trap. What do I mean? Let's say let's take Snake Eye Ash or let's take Super Heavy Samurai as an example. Let's say we negate these cards, right? Well, they still have the extenders and Bonfire and Ushi that they can use. Or even if they didn't have that, look at they can discard from the hand with their Dia Bell Star Witch or their motorbike, right? Multiple, multiple ways that they can play around a singular Ash Blossom or, or Infinite Impermanence, right? So that's the meta right now. Most cards can play through that, right? Having all three of those cards is rare. So what really realistically is we need two hand traps, right? And this is the math that you're seeing right now, the data to see exactly two hand traps. That's the red graph or at least two hand traps, right? That is the, so let's, for using these three as an example, seeing at least two of them, these are their percentages. Now, let's clear out this and let's make this a little bit easier to read. So, what do I mean? So, let's say we have, we're running 10 board breakers, right? We're running 10 board breakers. That's going to give us slightly under a 30% chance to see exactly two hand traps. Or, if we're running that same scenario, we have about a 36% chance to see at least two of them. And you can see following the yellow line how this works. And the important thing is, though, we want to see exactly two. But no matter how many hand traps we play, if we play 16 hand traps, the best we can get is seeing a 37% chance to see exactly two hand traps. And that's not that good. And why do we want to see exactly two again? What's what's so important about that? Well, because we want our other cards to be our other three cards to be our starter. And then again, those two extenders so we could play around the hand traps because that's what everyone's hand traps. It's a hand trap heavy, heavy format. Or if our starter gets negated, we need two extenders, right? Because what if one's a hand? What if they have one hand trap, right? So we want to have uh, the best optimal is two hand traps and then three starters, extenders, etc. Only 37% chance. Very, very interesting when we look at those numbers. And now I'm gonna show you the numbers for going second cards, but I need to explain going second cards because there's a big misconception, right? The biggest misconception is these are good board breakers, when in fact they're not. These are absolutely awful board breakers because they do one thing and that's they destroy cards and destroying cards is bad because first of all these cards can be easily negated these cards can be easily dodged these cards can be protected right ip mascarena can go into something and they're easily protected and even if you do destroy the back row or even if you destroy their monsters a lot of them can flow into something else you're adding them to the graveyard, which is a second hand for a lot of decks. These cards are not good going second cards. They're not good board breakers. So take these out of your decks, please. Especially when we're talking about going second cards and going good board breakers. Now here's some interesting going second cards or board breakers that are format dependent, right? But they have big weaknesses. Evenly matched Nibiru infinite impermanence well let's go one by one i'll tell you tell you what i'm talking about in the context of a going second deck because infinite impermanence is great going first but right it, it when you're playing that hand trap friendly deck when you're playing these going second decks infinite for permanence is not good and i'll explain why but first i just want to touch on evenly matched right you give up your battle phase and it's also weak against 
negate cards. Sure, it can come in handy in certain formats and, and versus certain decks. Very good as a side deck card, but if for main decking, it, it shouldn't be in your deck because, again, very format dependent. Nibiru, the same thing. Good against decks that can that combo more than five summons, but if you're not playing against that, well, now you just have a brick in the hand. Also, a lot of cards can make you, a lot of decks can make use of that token. So, not that good in certain decks, and certain decks play around it. So again, that's a good side deck card. And Infinite Impermanence, again, great when you combine it with other hand, hand traps, but the format I'm showing you in the, the Going Second Board Breaker format, we're not playing hand traps anymore. I'll get into more reasons why. There's a couple of exceptions, but generally we're not playing many hand traps. If, at the most, we're going one for one. We use infinite permanence, right? We're going second, so it's going to be used to negate. And because they went first, they got a lot of pluses. So really, if we're going to go one for one with a card to turn it off, playing a card like Gamma Cell, the Sea Turtle, is a much better option, right? Because now we get rid of that card instead. And speaking of Gamma Cell, right? Gamma Cell has a very special quality that I want to introduce you to what I'm going to call the stars of the show, the key cards. And that is these going second cards cannot be responded to, right? That's the key thing. The cards I'm going to show you are the superstars of our going second decks. These are the true board breakers that I want you to be playing from now on. And it's these four superstars right here. Forbidden Droplet. Ultimate Slayer, Super Polymerization, and Dark Ruler No More. If you play three copies, each of these, that means you have 12 of them in your deck. So when I go through the data charts later, just remember that number that we can have up to 12 of these, right? These are our superstars. Forbidden Droplet, Ultimate Slayer, Super Polymerization, and Dark Ruler No More. All cannot be responded to in certain ways. There's some ways you could play around them, right? By like activating a trap in some ways first before you do the monster effects. But in general, these are very hard to play around, right? So in a general sense, very, very good cards. And I'm going to take one of them an example, right? Just real quick, I'm going to use Ultimate Slayer. I'll give a quick 30 second rundown because that's special from the other ones. What this card does is you send a card from your extra deck and you take one of your opponent's monsters from the extra deck and you'll spin it back into the shuffle it back into the deck so if you're playing fusions here's some good targets for that link some good targets for that real quick elder entity entis is basically a pop it will destroy a card so ultimate slayer will spin a card back entis will pop an additional card you're getting two for one value there garura will let you draw a card and in TCG, I'm sorry, formats that are still un, like unbanned, like Master Duel, you can send Kalos, which will send five cards to the graveyard for graveyard decks. Tri Brigade Arms is interesting because you can send a beast card if you use that. So you send Garura. And for G, it lets you draw a card and discard and send a card back, I'm sorry, to, to, to your deck. So you can uh, send your Garnets back that way. So there's some link cards. Here's some good Synchro cards. And here's some XCs cards as well. Malong. We'll, spill, we'll bring a card back to the hand. Ignister is a good card that if they mess with your hand, right? If, if you don't finish them off and they mess with the cards on the field, you can now spin a card back into the deck. Meteor Ladger Aggregator will negate a card and totally awesome will get you a water card back. And why is that important? Well, if you were playing that Kaiju I said earlier, you can get your Kaiju back if it somehow wound, wound into the graveyard. Those are just some interesting Ultimate Slayer targets. Here's the second thing people do wrong, right? When we're talking about these board breakers and going second cards, don't mix hand traps with them. And I'll give you an example. Let's say we were going half and half, right? We had Ash Blossom and we drew Ash Blossom and Dark Ruler No More as our two cards, right? That were our hand traps or something like that, right? Well, it would have been better off if it was an effect failure in Ash Blossom because we could have probably cut them off and reduce the game to more simplified game state with these two cards right and if we would have ash blossom something then what's the point of the dark ruler no more because if they played around the ash you know what i'm saying it's, it's basically now we just had a wasted card so instead also this would have been a much better combo that's why we don't mix what about the other way around let's say we had the dark ruler no more right we're going second well 
imagine another super polymerization, right? Like we're playing these two cards together, right? So the Dark Willow No More, we play that, break their board, or if we think we can finish them because the Dark Willow No More has a special effect where your opponent won't take any damage, we could have used super polymerization if we want to go for maybe a finisher. But if we don't think we can OTK them, Dark Ruler No More, and then what happens is next turn, we have a set Super Palmerization. So on their Crackback, well, guess what? We have an un Unrespondable Negate. Way better than, not sorry, not an Unrespondable Negate, Unrespondable Fusion, where again, we're getting one of those really cool cards. We're getting rid of a two for one that's likely Unrespondable. So very good to keep these like that. And also there's great cards that where, where that super polymerization is, I'm going to show you some really good go second cards. But first, I want to show you the unrespond paradox because there's other board breakers I haven't even talked about yet. I'm just really focused on these unrespondable cards because remember, the maximum really that we could play is about 12, right? About 12 right here. And this is the, the data to getting exactly one or at least one, right? Now, we could play about 12 of them and you can see the bell curve on this is actually a bit tight uh, like like front loaded because we only need one card and it's fun how that data works so getting exactly one if we play eight at the height we have a 43.72 percent chance and when we're playing 12 cards right if we're playing all of them getting at least one of them is an about like an 85 percent chance to get that and that's you know that's your starter card ratio that's really good that's why you want to play 12 starter cards so realistically i could see you playing between 8 to 12 of these unrespondable cards and you'll be in very good shape in fact and you'll be in better shape because that 42 number is better than that hand trap number so let's go back and review that hand trap number remember the hand trap paradox we needed to play 16 hand traps to get to the maximum of a 37 percent chance to draw two hand traps exactly two while the unrespondable paradox eight cards alone gets us even a higher ceiling and now here's the kicker there's one thing about the data on the last graph that is crazy i didn't even include the six card this was math for five your first five cards in a 40 card deck right the six card this puts it even more in favor of the unrespondable cards over hand traps because let's think of the six card let's say you lost a coin flip and you're playing your hand traps right oh man you draw for turn your six card is an ash blossom how many times has that happened you're like oh where were you where were you last like on my opponent's turn while well, they're doing their whole combo oh man Wow, similarly, let's take it the flip side. Your six card in the unrespondable paradox. It's a dark ruler no more, or it's a super poly. That feels good. It feels euphoric. And that's an additional advantage that's, that this mathematics wasn't even covering. Let's jump into other cards that support these unrespondable cards. There's these archetypal cards where if your opponent controls dot, 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 right? There's over 180 cards with this sentence. I'm going to show you a couple of them, right? The Ninjas, Dogmatica, Battling Boxers, because some archetypes are just better at going second than others. These Ninjas let you combo off when your opponent controls a card. That Mystery Notebook will let you do further things. Dogmatica Matrix lets you add a card. That's Dogmatica in its name. And then add another Dogmatica card, right? You get to add the Ritual card. And then you add a Dogmatica card. So it's even better than Pot of Creed. So if you do Dark Ruler no more, then Dogmatica Matrix. Great. Remember, or, or same thing, those unrespondable cards. The Super Poly, etc., etc. Forbidden Droplet. Great with these cards. Same thing, Battling Boxers. There's also, again, you want, want to sprinkle three or four of these board breakers with the media presence. These like Pankratops, Fenver, Alpha, Master of Beasts. Having like three or four of these in your deck. Just, just not, not like each, or just like in total. Like you don't want to really have more than these. But these board breakers, when you reduce the game state to very simplified states, these are great to have after you do your effect right so you want to make sure you have enough cards to do the effect but these cards really 
help these simplified board boards especially when you play those unrespondable cards these cards are good at supporting it again run like i would say like th no more than three of these copies in total but they're great to sprinkle in finally there's cards that we want to sprinkle in too in these decks that give you a lock on the win they will if they resolve your win percentage will drastically improve and they're great going second cards triple tactics thrust triple tactics talent right if your opponent activates an effect what it's likely they're going to do we get to get we get to do a lot of good things right for example talent will let us look at their hand maybe get rid of an ash blossom so we can combo off and otk them or we can take control of their appalooza apollo usa i don't know whatever you want to call it right take control of their cards now we can negate their hand traps with that right if they might have their own hand trap or some other cards again very good cards and there's one exception i was saying don't play hand traps but in master duel specifically not tcg there's the card maxi the one hand trap i would say that is good to play going second because it, at the very least you're going one for one and it also can bait out your opponent's ash blossom right because a lot of these going second decks might want to play around the ash blossom too right we still need cards to play around the ash blossom but remember the board breakers actually allow us more cards to play around the ash blossom so that's fine that we're not playing the hand traps to play around ash blossom all right so let's take everything we learned and put it into practice right here we are playing the dogmatica cards a great going second engine and what are we going against? Oh no, it's Super Heavy Samurai, right? These guys are the king and making a multi-negate board. They're gonna go ham, they're gonna go crazy, they're gonna make a bunch of negates. Now, if we were playing a bunch of hand traps, we might have been in trouble because they are cooking. They have cards to play through the hand traps and at the very least, they could have ended on a Baguska. But we're playing going second here and we got lucky. We're playing the Dogmaticas. We drew the Dark Ruler no more. And remember, we had an 85% chance to draw our board breaker. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 more likely than not that we were gonna have it. You know, so you can't say, hey, you got lucky, you got your one board breaker. No, it's it's more likely than not that we were gonna have our board breaker here. So as our opponent goes and makes this unnegatable board, look at them cooking, right? Let's take a look at my dogmatic cards. These Dogmatica Albazoa is great against extra deck monsters. Dogmatica Matrix, again, is the Pot of Greed. Better than Pot of Greed. Taking a look at my extra deck here, you can see I'm running a lot of those cards. My Ultimate Slayer targets. I didn't draw my Ultimate Slayer, but again, I do have cards that are great to go to the graveyard. Dogmatica also excels at sending a lot of these cards to the graveyard, and they do various effects. You can also see there I have a little slight branded package in my going second deck here so branded also very good at going second if you make your deck right uh, but this is more dogmatica because i'm playing the rituals and you'll see here that it's very important as my opponent puts together this huge negate board right also in the back row they did set up a, a scythe so i won't be able to special summon so my branded package is going to be useless this first turn let's see what they do right so i drew another dogmatica matrix but remember that's my pot of greed that's fine. They max see me. Oh my gosh. For any other deck, this would be awful. But remember, and they here they go. They got rid of Artifact Scythe, right? Now I cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck, but that's fine, right? So my Dark Ruler, no more. It's going to negate everything, but I still can't special summon from the extra deck because that's that was a lingering effect that was already applied and I couldn't stop it. So I'm using these cards first, the branded cards first, just to see if anything lights up, to see if maybe he has a hand trap or something to play around, bait out some things, so I can use my Pot of Greed Dogmatica Matrix that's searching two Dogmatica cards that I really want. I'm sending Lulu Lilith to the graveyard to special summon Dogmatica Albazoa with my Ritual card. I'm under maxi, so I have to be very careful with how many cards I special summon. But the Dogmatica cards, if you see, excel at sending my cards from the graveyard and i'm getting much utility from sending my extra deck cards to the graveyard again i do think there's a lot of value uh, here comes maximus too i'm sending two more of my cards you can see i'm also milling a lot of their cards from the extra deck so i'm playing very punishing 
I stop here because, again, I want to get rid of their cards. I can't get rid of all of them. Boar Load is pretty much negated because I got rid of his Link card. So I pretty much got rid of all of his negates using my Maxi early, giving him a taste of his own medicine. And now it's time for his turn to crack blood back. I do like the protection Albazoa gives me from extra deck monsters. Again, he will have, because it was Maxi, he will have some cards to get rid of it. Curry Car is a great card I drew there. And now, also, you can see I'm using the great power of my branded engine. Now, even though I wasn't able to special summon last turn, the branded engine is letting me play this turn. There goes Malong, sending cards back to the hand. But I'm getting countered because of Max C. They have Curry Car, which is a good board breaker. I wasn't even able to talk about yet, right? I was talking about so many good board breakers. That's another good one to sprinkle into your deck. Like when I was talking about the King of Beasts, goes very well like with the triple tactics talent and all of that anyways he couldn't finish me because of my maximus in defense position very hard to get rid of my cards maximus will send two more cards from the extra deck to the graveyard to get so much value here goes my dogmatica matrix remember that's my pot of greed look at how much advantage i'm getting from these dogmatica cards this is remember i made my deck specifically to go second and that's why you'll notice i do have an infinite impermanence when i was saying it's iffy albazo is back baby right and I'll explain that in a second because you got you might want to see this, the interaction. I chose to get this Dogmatica Fluid or Lease. I don't know. He's another negate, right? So I'm fighting negates with negates. You can see how you can get negates just as easily with these go second decks than you can. Well, you don't need necessarily all these hand traps. I'm playing just fine, right? I got my own Kurikara too. And you'll notice there, I do have a Droll and Lockbird and an Infinite Permanence. In this version, I was trying out the playing a package across our designated package because again i you still might be concerned about getting hand trapped with ash or something like that but i found at the end of the day that the i took that cross out package out you don't need to play the hand traps and that's what made me trigger this whole video when i got down to the nitty gritty these extra deck going second cards everything so much better remember curry car it's so many cards i didn't even talk about because it was just the math I really wanted to show you. And speaking of which, and board breakers, what's a format dependent board breaker? Here's a riddle for you guys. That's easily searchable, but you lose your normal summon. So think about that. And while you think about that, please, if you like this video and if you want to see more stats, more things like this, please consider subscribing. I just made YouTube partner, which was pretty cool. So you could become a super fan too, if you'd really like to. Uh, but yeah, let's go down to the nitty gritty and what card you lose your normal summon, but it's easily searchable board breaker. Well, it's Lava Golem and Wing Dragon of Ra Sphere Mode. Lava Golem, easily searched through Dark Spirit's Mastery, right? Discard a card, add a Destiny board or level 8 Fiend Monster. That's how you can search that. So that Lava Golem, what it does is... It's like a kaiju. Get rid of two of your opponent's monsters. Special summon that, but you lose your normal summon. And you lose your normal set. Wing Dragon of Ra, same thing, but it gets rid of three cards. And the card that searches that is the True Sun God, because when that's activated, you can add a Wing Dragon of Ra or a card that mentions it, which is Fear Mode. It does some other effects too, but that's not really the point. Also, you could search that card, the True Sun God, with Guardian Slime by getting rid of, by discarding that card from your hand or a field to the graveyard. Let's say, but like the Abel Star or something like that. So many cards, Runic, so many cards can easily search this or get rid of it. Guardian Slime searches True, will search the True Sun God, right? And then True Sun God gets you Sphere Mode. Or you can use it as a battle effect, special summon it, and then when it gets taken care of or something like that. You can add True Sun God, add Sphere Mode next turn. Anyways, a lot of good board breakers to talk about. And the math on those Paradox was really what I wanted to show you. The, the hand traps, you're only going to get that 37% chance to get exactly two. And that's why everyone is complaining when they lose the coin flip. But making your deck geared to going second and having... Uh, not all decks can go second. Now remember, like... Drytron, for example, is a going first deck. It can't utilize those going second cards as good as the other decks that I was talking about. A Sprite, again, another going first deck. So don't use Sprite with these like board breaker kind of like decks because remember, they already need a two card combo to get going. 
plus they need all right they're great going first but not so much going second but the cards when they have a lot of those cards that you can if your opponent controls a monster that's a really good indicator that there might be a good going second deck so i really encourage you because the math is in your favor when you're going second we think the way we're looking at the game again that's the goal hopefully i achieved it and maybe now you could play some new going second decks let me know in the comments if you started what you think and i'll see you guys next time bye